question. Yeah. It's been answered all by by God for me already. Ooh. But uh, yes, but um, but you know, I, I subscribe to Buddha's view on the world, which was that you know, if you don't transcend the world this time, you, there's a high likelihood you'll keep coming back over and over again, lifetime after lifetime. Which is not a thing, you know, like, also recently it has come to me that, you know, like with my father, I don't want to be enlightened, uh, probably would refuse enlightenment while my father is alive. Because I see that as a karmic obligation out of love that I would stay here for him. Also, if I felt that the universe wanted me not to be enlightened, but to teach at a lower level, um, or something, uh, I would not float off and leave, then I would stick around, because I thought that would be God's will. But uh, um, the thing is, you know, and I totally agree with Hawkins' work, to the extent that I've let go of my ego, I mean, I say this thing, which is maybe quite conflicting to, to a lot of people for the previous video, which is that, the source of happiness is my connection. It doesn't come from outside of myself. So I'm not saying that people should not enjoy donuts and should not enjoy orgasms and should not, uh, and should not, uh, and I don't know, winning the lottery or whatever it is that, that people want to have enjoyment from. But, uh, you know, the, the key thing is, um, the key thing is, you know, for me, if I was to have an orgasm, it's some, someone's having a reaction to the word orgasm, but, or winning the lottery, or, um, what is it? I don't know, what, what, are, what are the big highs in orgasms, winning the lottery, I don't know what else there is. Uh, Fun? Donuts. 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 <laughs> orgasmic donuts. Uh, uh, orgasmic uh, donuts. donuts. So, you know, if I could have an orgasmic donut, whatever it is. But I would think, so I enjoyed this <laughs> orgasmic donut. But I'd be trying to practice, the next time I have the orgasmic donut, practice being in the observer of the orgasmic donut. Or donuts are meaningless. You know, orgasms are meaningless. Uh, I'd be practicing, so trying to transcend. Because for me, then, it's like if an external makes me happy, then if I transcend that, I'm going to be more happy just by being present in the infinite now. So to refute that the external world, to let go of my data, that the external, like donuts or sex or winning the lottery is the thing that gives me, the, gives me happiness. So, so I know if I transcend that, then my level of happiness is gonna be even higher just by being present, just by being in the infinite now, the timeless now. So I want the timeless now or now to be as happy as possible. And so for me, that is to the extent I've transcended data uh, in the world as being the thing that can make me happy. You know, I don't want to be like, I can only be happy if I'm in the Bahamas. I can only be happy if I'm having sex right now. I can only be happy if I've won the lottery. Because for me, if I hold that with strong identification, then it's a block to me being in the infinite now, now. It doesn't mean that also to say that I'm not against, I'm not against sex. I'm not, I'm not one of these people who say don't have sex, don't, earn, don't win the lottery. But for me it's like in the now having sex, but not, but not for me to label that the sex is the thing that makes me happy. That's the difference for me. So I don't like labeling that oh, the donut made me happy, that's why I was happy in the last moment. Mm -hmm. Or, the orgasm made me happy in the last moment, and orgasms make me happy. I'm more for, not, I mean, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that, mm -hmm. but I want to be in the, in the highest now, now, without a story. In terms of, like, well, why, why live in this world if that's all you want? Um, it's, not, it's not, I mean, in, on a certain level, being in the, in the white light spirit, there is nothing in this world that can compare with the white light spirit. It's, it's in a magnitude many times beyond anything experiencing in this world. But, you know, I do believe, like what Hawkins says, there are karmic contracts. Also, as you get to oneness, uh, there gets a love of all those who are in, su in suffering and in illusion in the world that can come on board. And so, uh, out of a different level of love, shall we say, 
of those who are still suffering in the illusion of separation in, in what is really, in truth, oneness and light, there comes a thing to stay, or there can be karmic contracts, to stick around and teach at the level one is at, you know, uh, and uh, on a certain level, you know, it depends where you're at. At a certain level, it can be selfish, just leave the world right now, and not, and if you have a level of truth you can share with the world, to not carry on sharing it until, let's say, spiritually it's ordained, you are allowed to leave. So that can also be an aspect. Um, one, you know, I believe one can only be what one is. To the extent that I act, to the extent, I believe, that, you know, my view is that to the extent everyone has cleared, they are that. And they are an expression of what they are that they have cleared to date. Everyone is just being what they are. And there is no such thing as wrong. Like if you've done no spiritual work, you're not wrong or bad, you just are what you are. Anyone who's done five years of spiritual work is what they are. It's not a wrong or bad thing or a moral judgment. They are, they, you know, a cat is expressing, as Hawkins say, catness. <laughs> you know, a criminal is expressing criminalness perfectly. And they're not wrong or bad, they're just being what they are. Uh, a saint is, is just, it's not a moral superiority thing to just be a label of good or bad or hierarchy is just being what they are, which is the absence of what they're not. So, and, uh, you know, The Course in Miracles says, um, I was trying to answer the question, you know, I think on a certain level, anytime there is a conflict in consciousness, it should be dissolved. That's my own view. Uh, and people can choose different options. I choose more the pathway of the mystic. There, I mean, if you went to another group, some people choose the pathway of selfless service, which is, you know, like, which is also another way to go. I don't really share about it. Like, if you want to go out and give sandwiches to the homeless people for the rest of your life, that is a way to God, you know, to see Christ in every homeless person, to make sandwiches with love, and to give sandwiches to every homeless person. That will also take you to God. Uh, and, you know, and I'm sure there are people teaching various forms of selfless service uh, to the world, you know. Um, you can mix pathways up, you know. You know, the one can be like, you know, they can make sandwiches and see Christ in all the people, homeless people, and practice being in the observer at the same time. So you can do two pathways at the same time, uh, or you can just do one. Even just to forget the observer and transcend the world, just come see Christ in everyone and just make sandwiches for the homeless people. That will also take you to God. I don't really share about that because it's not my, it's not my specific pathway. But I, I have to respect anyone who wants to get to God through that pathway, or you can mix up. I'm in the 12 steps as well. So in the 12 steps, we have an aspect of service. And I will speak to people, might speak to people who have problems with donuts, if anyone's got a donut problem. And, uh, and I, I will not talk to them about the observer and transcending their ego and being enlightened. You know, I will just keep it to a level of service uh, without enlightenment and donuts, and that donuts are illusion and so they don't need to worry about it, you know, I'll speak to them in a different, <laughs> different language. So there is an aspect of that aspect that goes on for myself, even though it's not, it's not a thing that occupies consciousness. My main thing is like transcendence rather than service, even though there's an aspect of service. Um, I still do agree with the course that this whole world is an illusion, but also I would also say that if you're in the illusion, it's very real. You know, anyone who hasn't got any money to buy a donut and hasn't got a roof to live on. I'm not saying that they're not suffering. That's not what I'm saying. And that their experience is not real for them. That's not what I'm saying. Even though I would say at a level of truth, this whole world is not real. But because there has been identification with thoughts and patterns and fear, the whole world becomes real for them of what it of course would call fear and separation seems to be what is real for them. And I, you know, I believe that experience is real for them in that way, even though at the level of the course it's an illusory experience, it's real for them and they suffer. I suffered my experience when I didn't have, uh, so there is suffering in the world and, and, uh, and for me the course is one way of relieving suffering, but also for me the pathway of the mystic and like Hugh Len, as you relieve your own suffering, for me you are helping the world. Even if you don't choose a pathway of making sandwiches and, you know, like, 
okay, I've been a good person with God, I've made a hundred sandwiches for a hundred people, I've given them a hundred sandwiches, so I have actively shown my love in the world through selfless service. I'd say also a person who doesn't go out and make sandwiches, but just transcends their stuff and sits in their room alone, uh, and hasn't done anything in the world, seemingly, is also can sometimes be doing more than the person who, or sometimes the person doing sandwiches is doing more than the person sitting, it depends. Mm -hmm. But equally, they're equally valid paths that can be mixed. Um, you know, I think, you know, from a point of myself suffering, I, I, you know, I sometimes glamorize the idea of if it being enlightened, and then if it's God's will, being in the world at an enlightened state would be nice. But some people can choose, like, I don't want to go in the light, I want to be like a saint. I want to be, like, still in my body, still thinking, making choices, and being of service. And that's another choice, not right or wrong. But, uh, uh, yeah, there is an aspect of me that would like to return to the light. But there's also an aspect of me who gets attachments and love for humans here as well. So, uh, but then there's a, you know, so that there, there's, it's complicated. Yeah. Uh, you know, I don't think this world is for, you know, like Hawkins said, like Buddha was at the highest level of Christ. So I don't believe this world is not set up for one person to save it and, and eliminate all the suffering in the world. <clears throat> I think this is a school that's meant to be here. It's not God's will that <clears throat> this super, super enlightened person suddenly is here and then this whole world ceases to exist and everyone I don't think that is the purpose of this place. Um, <clears throat> that's my personal view. Um, so even an enlightened teacher does not end all suffering. You know, that's not necessarily meant to be the, the meaning. This is a, a school of transcendence where enlightenment is possible. That's my own view. Um, but uh, yeah, it's a great question. <laughs> <laughs>